Today is August the 29th. Today, we'll read one of the forgotten stories of Israel. What are they? Well, let's find out together. Today, as we read through the Bible in a year, I'd love for you to read uh, Judges chapter 17 and 18. Now, I've called these passages uh, from here to the end of the book of Judges, the forgotten stories of Israel. They're forgotten pretty much because we don't talk about them very much. Uh, they are not popular reading for uh, children's stories. Uh, these are PG and even R rated uh, uh, stories. Um, their purpose is to show just how deep and how quickly Israel has fallen. So in Judges chapter 17, as you read that, you would have found a man named Micah. Micah stole money from his mother and a considerable amount of money, 1,100 talents of silver. Uh, finally, his conscience gets the best of him. He goes to his mom and he says, I stole the money. She says, oh, thank you for telling me. God bless you and says, I will, because you have returned this money to me, I'll take a portion of it and dedicate it to the Lord. She makes an idol. Uh, her dedication to the Lord is creating an idol with the silversmith and an ephod. Micah takes the idol, sets it up in his house, makes one of his own sons a priest of that God, and then a young Levite comes through. Micah takes a liking to him, and he asks him if he would please stay and be the priest of that idol. We come to find out later that uh, this is actually a descendant of Moses' son Gershom. Whether his son or grandson, uh, the word that's used in chapter 18 is a little bit ambiguous. It simply means a descendant. But he is from the Moses line of the tribe of Levi. In chapter 18, the, um, the idol is established in Micah's house. We switch now to the tribe of Dan. And in chapter 18, uh, verse 1, the tribe of Dan was trying to find a place where they could settle for they had not yet moved into the land assigned to them when the land was divided among the tribes of Israel. What we learn actually earlier in uh, the book of Judges is that the tribe of Dan, not only were they not able to drive out the inhabitants of the territory that they were assigned, but the inhabitants drove them out, drove them to live in caves in the mountains. So Dan decides, well, let's find a new place. And they send out five men to look for a new place. Those five men go way north, beyond what uh, Moses had set as boundaries for the promised land. And they find a land that's fertile, but it's relatively unoccupied. Uh, the five men come back and say, we've found the land. But on their way there, they stopped at Micah's house, just five of them. They saw the idols, saw the priest. So when the whole tribe goes, now there are 600 armed men. They pass by Micah's house, and they break into the temple that Micah had set up. Steal the gods, steal the ephod, start walking away. And the priest, the Levitical priest, comes. It says, what are you doing? And they say, um, would you rather be priest to one man in his family or priest to an entire tribe? They tell them where they're going, and he goes with them. Micah then, hearing all the commotion, comes out and says, what are you doing? And their answer is, be careful what you say. Some of the guys here have quick tempers, and 
we can't be responsible for what they might do to you. So Micah lets the silver idol, the ephod, and his priest go with the tribe of Dan. Now the whole purpose of this section is to let us know just how far Israel has fallen. Um, fell pretty far with Jephthah, fell pretty far with Samson. Now we have a time when there's not an oppressor, or more appropriately, what we'll see tomorrow is the oppressor is actually the nation of Israel. And there is no judge. In fact, in chapter 17, verse 6, in those days, Israel had no king. All the people did whatever seemed right in their own eyes. Chapter 18, verse 1. Now, in those days, Israel had no king. In chapter 19, verse 1. Tomorrow we'll read this. Now, in those days, Israel had no king. And when the entire book of Judges ends, the final verse, chapter 21, verse 25, in those days, Israel had no king. All the people did whatever seemed right in their own eyes. The whole point of these two chapters is to show us just how far Israel had fallen. Micah did what he did because the neighbors, the Philistines, the, the Palestinians that lived in the area that drove them into the mountains, well, they had their gods. They had their um, ephods and their temples. My takeaway from these two chapters, for us today, it's important for us to guard against peer pressure. Micah succumbed to the peer pressure of creating handmade gods, images that he could worship. We're probably not going to be pressured to do that. Peer pressure today comes in many different forms. Be careful with peer pressure. Like, follow, and subscribe to this devotional on whatever platform you use to listen to it. Email your questions to us at questions at becomehope.com. Tomorrow, we'll see another of the forgotten stories of Israel.